Hi, welcome to this edition of Digital Discoveries. Today we're going to be looking at a really exciting program that's been purchased for a good number of our uh, campuses that are in our TLI grant. The, this is a program that's actually been put on our iPads in our TLI grant and it's called Inspiration Maps. And so we're going to walk through Inspiration Maps today. We're going to talk about what it is, why we'd even be using it in our classrooms, and then we're going to walk through um, actually using it to show you how it kind of works. And then hopefully, after you see this, you'll be inspired to use it with your students. And if you're a student watching it, you're going to ask your teacher, hey, can we use Inspiration Maps because it's a pretty cool program. So let's go ahead and dive into it and talk about Inspiration Maps. So what is Inspiration Maps? Well, this is a software that any teacher that's familiar with uh, the program um, Inspire Kids or Inspiration for Kids or Inspiration is probably familiar with with this software because it's mind mapping software. It's that uh, visual learning software. And the idea behind visual learning software, or actually visual learning period, is that kids can make connections, or some kids can make connections better if there's a, a, some kind of visual attached with the learning that's going on. So instead of just, for instance, telling the kids about the parts of a flower, you actually add a visual. And so you actually delve into the parts of the flower. So there's some kind of some kind of picture that goes along with it and so the kids can make those connections. And so that's what visual thinking is all about. It's associating some kind of work with pictures. So this type of software, which is, uh, this actually is actually made by the people that make inspiration and it's made by the uh, inspira inspiration for kids. Uh, this is called a graphic organizer. And what a graphic organizer does is it helps students, like it says here, create relationships between concepts. And start, instead of just taking notes and not making any kind of relationship with those notes, uh, this kind of software actually lets the kids uh, connect the dots, so to speak, but graphically. So there's different ways of doing that. There's a graphic organizer is kind of like a, an overall way of looking at it. A lot of our teachers probably are also familiar with uh, graphic organizers that they use for foldables, a dynazite kind of things, those foldables. Those are graphic organizers as well, as well. So if you're using graphic organizers as foldables for your students' um, uh, interactive journals, then you're familiar with graphic organizers. This is just a digital way of doing it. So graphic organizers, there's different kinds of graphic organizers. Some are called concept maps. And what a concept map does, it helps students demonstrate an understanding of a topic. So a concept map is made after you actually learn the lesson. You actually create the concept map. Here's one, and I purposely put this one up because this one's kind of a kind of a complicated one on pathogens. And I did this to show that concept maps and this kind of software isn't relegated just to elementary schools. You can use these at any grade level. So this one is from a high school where they were talking about pathogens, bacteria, viruses, fungal diseases, all different kinds of, of ooey gooey stuff there. So another type of graphic organizer is a mind map. And a mind map is kind of like uh, note taking, but it's note taking with pictures. And this has become very, very popular uh, it, throughout, the, throughout the education world, uh, adding pictures while you're taking notes. And so what the graphic organizer mind map does is they're adding notes, but they're also making the connections at the same time that they're taking the notes. This has become very popular, uh, not only for taking notes, but also for doing presentations as well. You've probably seen those uh, presentations that are done online where uh, while someone's talking, they're actually writing down, they're, they're graphically writing, they're like making cartoons of what's being said. Uh, one of the most famous ones is uh, of Ken Robinson uh, talking about creativity in the classroom, where they're actually writing a cartoon while he's talking. And so those are kind of some really interesting things. That's what a mind map does. Now, a graphic organizer can also be used as a webbing tool. Now, the, what a web is, it shows how categories relate for, to one another. So this is a very simple one that I put up here, trees. So what do trees have to do with oxygen, and what do they have to do with wood? Well, they both give wood, they both give oxygen. And so then they go down and break it down even further and further down, all the way down to the bottom. Well, what is, why is oxygen important, and why is wood important? What's it used to build? All those different kinds. So that's a very simple thing called webbing. So graphic organizers can be used for webbing. 
They can be used for mind mapping. They can be used for concept mapping. And of course, all of these things are kind of uh, used as uh, outlining devices. So we've actually, um, we've actually thrown an outline up here because this software will actually create an outline for you as you're creating the mind map. So you can create the mind map, it'll create an outline. You can also go the other way around. You can create the outline and it'll create a mind map for you. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna switch on over. That's what the software does. Now we're gonna show you how it does it. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is of course turn the app on. And so we wanna find what that app looks like on our, uh, on my iPad, it's a little bit different because I have a few more apps on there, but it looks like this. It's a little mind map looking thing. It's got inspiration underneath it. So when you hit it, it'll pop up. And this is what our, our uh, mind map looks like. And when you start off, you're going to actually get a bunch of templates. I'm gonna pop up those templates there. You actually have a whole bunch of different templates that you can start working on. And so, and they're broken down by grade level, not grade level, but by course uh, 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 curricular areas. So there's English one, there's ones for English, there's ones for history. You can see uh, there's uh, civilization analysis, event analysis, and what those are, they're just templates, just like a template for anything. You're not stuck with their, that particular way of doing it, but that's just kind of to get a student going or to get you going if you haven't used this uh, type of thing before. So it's got history, it's got science, it's got a science lab report. Um, it's got uh, things like the six kingdoms of biology, vocabulary list. I know that in science, vocabulary is very, very important. So we want to make sure that uh, uh, vocabulary is, is, uh, is done. And so you don't have to do it vocabulary just with science. You can use vocabulary for, for any area, of course. And then there's, at the end, it's just some thinking skills uh, uh, templates that they've put in. So that can be used in any cor curricular area. So what we're going to do, actually, we're gonna scroll back up to the top and we're gonna start our own diagram. We're gonna start it from very scratch. So if you see in the upper left-hand corner there, it says new diagram. So it's right there, new diagram. So we're gonna touch that. And then it asks you, it gives you a little description. When you pop that up, it says, well, what do you wanna do? And so we wanna use that template. And so we click on use. And so there we go, there's our first template. And you can see there's absolutely nothing there. It's just starting out. And so you have this big blank area. We're gonna walk through this whole big blank area. And so since it's an iPad, the way to, uh, to, way to change things is to use your finger. You gotta use your finger to do things. Now, of course, when we're showing it on the screen, you can't actually see my finger hitting the screen, but you'll get the idea when something changes, it's because I've used my finger to, to change it. So I'm gonna change the main idea here. And so maybe my main idea is I want to select all, delete that out, and I want to type in, I don't know, let me type in uh, uh, the water cycle. Okay, so there's my, there's my main idea. So I'm going to do something here on the water cycle. So you can see automatically that I've got, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I've got some things here that I can actually change. I can I can actually make a connection to the water cycle. That's in that's a little arrow down there. I can make this kind of connection. Or I can go back up. I can do all different kinds of stuff with it. I can add some notes about the water cycle. I can come back in here and say, the water cycle is how, whoops, how we get water from the oceans to our faucets. I don't know, you could say something like that. It can be anything, I'm sure the water cycle, of course the water cycle is a bit more complicated than that. So you can add notes, and now you can see, I'm gonna, I got my finger down, you can't tell, but you can see because I'm moving, you can actually move anything around that you're doing, and th that's still connected to there. I can move any of my, of my um, uh, areas around. I can even move the connections around. So that's, uh, that's immediately something that you can think about. Now I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit more. We're gonna go back to the water cycle. So you saw already that I can add a note because there's a little note taking thing. I can also add a connection and let's zoom in here. I don't know if we can see it real quick on the camera, but right here, upper left-hand corner, that's for adding notes. This is for collapsing because after a while you're gonna have a lot of things actually uh, actually going off your main idea. So there's not just one thing on the water cycle. There's lots of things that'll come off on the water cycle. And so you can collapse those down if you want to, 
if you're talking about things. And actually for teaching, what's really neat about this is that you can open them up one at a time. So if you're talking about a concept that's got multiple subcategories underneath that, you can open them up. Kids can do that as well. And if you ever want to add another category, you just hit that little arrow right there. Okay, so that's how you start. And now there's lots of different things you can do once you start. You can actually change anything that's highlighted. You can change the look, you can change the feel of anything that's highlighted. So let's say, for instance, I want to uh, change how the water cycle kind of looks. So I want to change it from a, a, an oval to a rectangle. So I just hit rectangle and it changes. If I want to change it to a rounded rectangle, that's, I just go through there. I can do square, I can do all different kinds of things. I can also uh, change the style. I can change the color of that if I want. So maybe I want my water cycle to be yellow. Actually, probably blue is probably good for the water cycle. Uh, I can change the color. I can change the size of the line. I can actually change the color of the line, make the line a different color if I wish to. I can actually change the, the attribute of the line. I can make the line thicker if I want. So if you're emphasizing a particular thing, you can make that line very, very thick. Uh, I can also change the text, of course. I can change different fonts. I can say I don't want my font to be Helvetica, for instance. Maybe I want it to be Chalkboard or Georgia or something like that. I can change it to be anything I like. And then I have some control over how my diagram looks. I can actually change the way the, the arrows look. I can make them very, very straight arrows. I can kind of make them curved if I want. Uh, I can change the background color of my of my diagram. I'm just popping around showing you can change the color. And if you want to get really fancy, it's kind of hard to tell on this particular thing. I'm going to zoom in, but you can actually change the texture of the background, which doesn't show up so much on this particular uh, particular screen. But trust me, if you're looking at it on an iPad, you can actually see that it looks like linen or cloth paper or watercolor paper or something like that. So you can do all different kinds of things like that. So. Let's say I want to talk, uh, I want to add some more to my water cycle here. So I'm going to close that down. And I'll say precipitation because I know that's part of the precip, uh, precipitation. And then, of course, if I misspell it, that'll, that'll show me. And maybe I want to talk about different types of precipitation. Rain. And I want to add another one. Rain. Uh, whoops. Right. By the way, if I add something, let's, let's go back there real quick. Say it's rain and I hit the wrong button. Say I hit the note button instead of the, if I want to get rid of that rain, that little note button there, all I have to do is hit the X and it closes it down. It gets rid of it. So that's a great way. So maybe I want to add another thing to precipitation. Uh, uh, let's see, there's a snow. Let's see, I come in here, I type in snow. There's different, different things I can do with that. I zoom out. Now, of course, I can also, you can see, I can change where they're at. I can do all different kinds of stuff like that. And now, this is a pretty boring, uh, a, a pretty boring uh, mind map right now. It's a pretty boring uh, diagram. So maybe I want to add some pictures. So there's different ways to add pictures in this, and it's built into the system. So let's go back, and let's say we want to click on rain, and I want to change that from just uh, an oval with rain, and I want to say I want to add a picture of rain. So I can actually, uh, if you can see in this uh, thing that I've popped up here, the shape, I can actually use my camera. I can go out and take a picture of rain if it happens to be raining in El Paso. That doesn't happen too often. But I can actually go grab something off the web. And so here in my camera roll, I might have a picture of rain. And so here I go, and now I've clicked on that, and now I've got a picture of rain. I've got a picture of rain, whoops, Let's move that out so you can see that. So now my rain makes a little bit more sense, it's a little bit more graphical to me. If I've got the water cycle, and I did this ahead of time, I went out and got these pictures. If I want to have a picture of the water cycle, I can go to my camera roll, and maybe here's a pretty good picture of the water cycle. There it is. I can add that. If I want to talk about snow, I think I have a picture of snow. I took click on the one that I'm interested in. Again, I go back to my camera roll. I click on my picture of snow. 
and there's my picture of snow. So there's, there's some very, very simple examples of, of how you can add pictures, I'm gonna click out of there, to my, um, to my diagram that I'm making. So now, let's talk a little bit about how I can add really quick some things to my, to my diagram. So let's talk about rain. Oh, let's see, whoops, I added the wrong picture here. Let me go back and, whoops, sorry about that. I'm gonna add a picture of rain there. I have the wrong picture, there we go. So maybe now I want to start talking about rain and we wanna to talk to our kids about rain and they have lots of ideas popping forth. You can actually, uh, you can actually do this thing called uh, uh, kind of like a lightning round where you can just add lots of stuff all at one time where you don't have to go back and forth. So if you go up to the upper right hand corner of the screen, I'll point that out right there, you can see this lightning bolt. If you add the lightning bolt, it allows you to add lots of uh, information all at once. So, okay, so what about rain? So maybe some kids will say, well, you can flood with rain. Uh, it's good for crops. Um, it um, causes damage. There's hurricanes. Maybe they're like coming up with all these ideas. And so sometimes when you're getting generating ideas in a class, you want them to come up with all these really cool, uh, really fast things. And th that's what that lightning uh, thing is for. And so let's see, um, uh, maybe we associate rain with clouds, who knows? And so when we're done, we just stop. And now all of a sudden you see, I've got all these things that are associated with rain. I can move this around now if I want. And I can do, 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 rain. Clouds, floods, damage. I can straighten them all out, make it a little bit more interesting to me. And now, of course, I could go out and get pictures of crops or damage or hurricanes if the kids are, if we're actually doing that. And maybe I want to add about hurricanes. The most recent hurricane in the U.S. was Sandy. And maybe I want to say. U.S. instead, so, okay. So there's my, there's my little note about hurricanes that I want. Now, you can also rearrange things once they're there. You can actually rearrange uh, diagrams. Now, snow, for instance, maybe I wanted clouds to be under snow instead of clouds to be under rain. I don't know, this is a, a, a weird lesson going on in class. So I can actually highlight the, um, I can actually highlight the link from one, from the main category, from any category, I can highlight that link. And I can actually, once it's highlighted, I can actually move the link. So that little button comes up, and now I want it attached to, s to clouds, to, to snow. I didn't want it there. Um, so now I can also, if I go back and highlight it, I can also type in there, and I can say, comes from. So now I've got zoom in right there. I can say that snow comes from clouds. Okay, I can, you know, this is maybe a very simple lesson. Uh, or maybe our elementary kids are talking about that. And so that's, that's a very, very simple mind map. It's a very, very simple diagram that we've created. But now, maybe I want to look at that as an outline. Well, remember we said earlier that the program actually automatically creates an outline for you. So let's go see. If I go up to the upper right hand upper left hand corner of the screen up here right there you can see that I have two symbols one's a diagram and one is a bunch of lines those lines are the outline so I'm going to click on outline and so now there's my exact same things that I just did but it shows up in outline form if I want to uh, change things around maybe I want to uh, move clouds back to the rain, I can actually grab it and move it back up. Uh, there was rain and clouds, and uh, I can move all these things around if I want. Maybe I want rain to be before, uh, to be after snow, so I can do that and grab it around. And so now I've got an outline. Why is that important? Because now my outline, I can actually export that to other programs like Pages or, or Word or some other program, I can do some word processing. I can actually add to this as well. So let's go ahead and add to this. I'm gonna double tap, and maybe I want to pop it out, make it a bigger category. What's another, now I, I'm gonna add fog. Whoops, F-O-G, and uh, fog, uh, 
fog clouds. I'm just adding that because it's kind of silly sounding. So now I've got fog clouds. I've added some more under precipitation. I've added fog. Um, there's different kinds of precipitation. Maybe I want to add another one here. I double tap it and I said hail. Those are just different kinds of precipitation, I guess. And so now I've added these to my outline. Now what do you think happens to my mind map? Of course what happens is that it's automatically added to my mind map. So if I go back to my mind map and it pops out, now anything that I just added shows up. So look, there's fog clouds, there's that way we just did, and there's hail. So these are all parts of precipitation. So we probably want to clean them up a little bit, but there they are. So now I've got, uh, I've got some, probably got some pictures of hail or pictures of fog, and I could add those as well. Now, why do we want to use this type of uh, program in our classes? Well, I think a lot of teachers are well aware how mind maps work and how visual learning actually helps a lot of our students. And it's not just elementary. If you go to, um, if you go to most schools, you'll see some kind of Venn diagram or some kind of mind map that students have created. It doesn't matter what the grade level is. But I have noticed this. I have noticed that in our campuses, at least, this type of, uh, this type of thing kind of peters out the higher up you go. The, more, the closer you get to 12th grade, the less they're using this type of thing. They use them a lot in elementary school. And that's a shame because actually these, sh these types of things, if you're a visual learner in third grade, you're probably a visual learner in sixth grade, and you're probably a visual learner in 11th grade doesn't all of a sudden switch off from being a visual learner. So these are the kind of things that we need to be using all the way through. So how can we save these things? How can we share them? Well, once a student is uh, done on their mind map, you can actually export them in different ways. What we're going to do is we're going to go up to this little thing right here, and you can click and export. It's a little square with an arrow coming out of it. And I wish I could zoom in on it, but I can't. And so once you do that, you click that button, it comes up with several choices that you can, you can send it to iTunes, to Dropbox, send it to a particular app if you want, or you can save it to Photos. Let's go ahead and save this in our Photos. Because once you save it in Photos, it goes to all different kinds of places. And it says, the image of your diagram has been saved to Photos. That's great. Now let's go back to our, let's go back to our outline. Now of course, this is a very simple, very quick outline that we just made but the idea is still the same. We can actually come up here and we can actually click on that and share. So now when we share, we can share to different apps like, for instance, we can save it as a text file or as a PDF file and, and then any app that takes that will, whoops, any app that takes that will also, uh, will also um, be able to import those things. So pages, Word, Google Docs, any kind of things that'll take a text file or a PDF file, you'll be able to see. So let's go look real quick and see if our picture is actually in our camera roll. So I'm going to pop out here. And let's go look in our camera roll. I'm going to look for photos. There it is. And here's our latest picture. And there it is. That's what was exported. That's the picture that was exported. So kids can import those into anything, a web page. This is a picture. It's a JPEG file. So kids can save that as uh, onto a web page. They can put it into a movie. They can put it into a slideshow. Anything like that is, uh, is pretty cool. And one last thing I want to show you is um, I'm going to go back to the program here. Remember earlier I talked to you about uh, closing things down and showing how things work. So let's see. So if I, if I collapse everything down here from my water cycle, I say, ah, I'm not really interested too much in these things. So I can start popping things out as I'm talking about them. So here, I'm talking about the water cycle. So if I click on this first button right up here, and I'm having a conversation with my class, whoops, it's hard to do from the side. Now we can start, okay, now we're going to talk about precipitation. Okay, kids, what are some different ways, what are some types of precipitation? And then as we do that, then we pop it open and there's some more stuff. So kids, when they're presenting in class, they can actually present 
their lesson from the big idea to the small idea, or vice versa using this. So it's actually a pretty cool presentation tool as well as a, uh, an organizing tool, a graphic organizing tool. So that's Inspiration Maps. That's, our, that's a really interesting program. It comes already loaded with our TLI grant uh, uh, iPads that we've put out in the district. So there's a whole bunch of copies of, uh, of Inspiration Maps out there. I hope that you'll start using it with your classes and students. I hope that you'll start asking your teachers, can we, can we use Inspiration Maps to take notes or to create content so we can share in class. Inspiration Maps is a great introduction to mind mapping. It's a great introduction to graphic organizing. If kids are using foldables, they understand how Inspiration Maps work. It's just a digital version of a foldable. Maybe not as fancy as a foldable, but it's pretty close to it. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Digital Discoveries. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.